That is just weird. Well, YouTube has gone and changed things and they have made it rather frustratingly complicated. There doesn't appear to be an explicit start-stop facility now, whereas in the past what would happen is you would, from Open Broadcaster, start streaming and then when, when you were happy with how it was, appearing on the dashboard for the YouTube live status, you could say, you know, go live. Now that seems to have just vanished and and it sort of makes up its own mind whether it wants to go live or not, regardless of what you want to do. And same with actually f terminating the stream. I found last night, when I finished the stream, there was no button to say end this stream. Instead, I just had to wait it out and hope that it did end it. Thankfully, it did. But um, it would be nice if they had those explicit controls for me. So I'll have to sniff around see if I can find out what's going on there. Because that is frustrating. Hey Gary. Taro. Haven't seen you before Taro, I don't think. Scratch nose. Hey Oliver, Teresa, Andrew, Margarita, Nick, Ed, hello. Alrighty. Okay, so we got a 1466. Huzzah. As you can see, can't go wrong for 1466, let's go to the overhead. Battery disconnected, we'll take the data out. Let's see, that's from last night. Stick a sticker on the screw box. That way I don't lose the screw box and go, whose is this? get that drive out. Hey James, Steve, Newsboy. Uh, busy week for you, huh, Sutterbridge? Well, that's always good. Hey 101, I'm Braden Smith from Louisiana, hello. Hey Barry West. Hey Steve, I said hello. Jeez, I think everybody's getting a little too used to having their hellos. Maybe we should all go back and get used to how life is trying to get Mr. Rossman's attention. Best of luck with you all. There's plenty of streams where I've been in the chat and he has completely missed the fact that I'm there. Oh, that or he just doesn't like talking about me. Too late, Steve, I saw that. Retraction doesn't help you. You can't rewind and erase. Okay, battery out. Hey Pedro, how's it going? You started your business yet? You had any more jobs? Okay, so supposedly this doesn't work. It's a 3437, so I guess we'll update that at least. Job 187 Update and Teresa, you're a Lewis escape goat today. Oh my, what did you do? I saw he was repairing the push bike, but I um, didn't see much more than that. Hey Nelson. Hey Mark. How's it going? Many thanks for sorting out those things for me, Mark. Those top decks and everything else. Ooh, okay, so this person's got a fake keyboard thing. Still, these are actually not too bad in the sense that at least they're useful for protecting against stuff, but and they've Cover up the camera as well. Mm. 
Let's see what happens when we plug our MagSafe in. Okay, 18 volts. Not the right one. Let's see. Where's our chipmunk? You distracted him with commenting on the YouTube and he stuffed up. Well, he can stuff up perfectly well without you distracting him. Okay, we've got 80, 90, 100 milliamp. Okay, this is different. I haven't really seen this sort of behavior before, so... One and a half watts. It's wiggling all over. The oh, we are up actually even running. Oh wait, it's a 34.37. Of course it's going to do this. It'll do it one more time. And we've got CPU activity. And it's alive. There's nothing wrong with it. Vishal, MacBook Air not detecting hard drive. Uh, there's a few different reasons for that. Some are good, some are not. And we've got a blinking flipping folder. Is it our solid state drive that's causing this to be a problem? We're going to have to take the board out. You know we are. That's a solid bong. Oh, wait. No, that's not right. You shouldn't do two dongs like that. Hey, Cubby Seawolf. Ainsley. Yeah, she's stuck just past the apple. When it sticks just past the edge of the apple logo, that's a... It's a bad sign. You can barely see it there, but... Oh, it's progressed, okay. I do get a fair few drives where they just stick at a certain point and that's the end of them. Alright, it's got Catalina on it. Whoa, everything's booting fine, but by gosh it's dark. Interesting setup. Looks like it's a Japanese on it. Oh, crikey! I don't know Japanese. Oh, we're going to take the board out because. I generally trust the person that sends it to me. And so if they say it wasn't working, then it's quite possible it wasn't. So if we're just going to take it, uh, yeah, take the board out. It's entirely possible that on the other side we're going to have some corrosion by the clock chip or the SMC or something. So anyway, I'm just waiting for this. Hey, JB. Is this going to shut down properly or is it just going to torment me? Hey, I'm an Apple user, Cider Bridge. Hey, Keith McDermott. James Finnegan, thank you very much. Two quid for the ice cream. That's always an excellent option. Okay, that's weird. The fan stopped. The system's still on. 
It's not really the sort of behavior you see from a 1466. Something squirrely is definitely going on around here. Hey, Vogon. Ah, oh, Sada, that's harsh words. You're killing me, man. To think I thought we were best buddies on the internet. Whatever will I do now? Anyway, board's coming out. Something's amiss. Often what does happen is in the transit process, you know, being shaken around and things like that, if there is corrosion on something, it often breaks free. Or readjusts, things like that. Do an SMC reset. I'm not going to bother doing that. I'm going to have a look at the board first. Hey, Paul. There's too many Pauls in this chat. I've ceased listening to people on chat after last night we had that person come in and say they've done a thousand of those 1278s and that it's going to be the screen at fault. And well, were they right? No, they weren't. I'm sure they've done a thousand of them. But I'm doing this one. And when I'm doing it, since I've got the microphone, you can all just shut up and take a seat and enjoy the ride. I was going to do an Adam Sandler wedding singer pitch then, but I changed my mind. Uh, Dave, I actually haven't had a chance to do the ultrasonic. Instead, I was busy out in the yard building the fencing enclosure so yeah the ultrasonic is on at the moment so okay we've got corrosion down here straight away i can see there's something there yep there we go by the smc by the bios see this is why you take these boards out because it looks perfectly good up here you take it out and you find there's an absolute disaster of corrosion on the underneath and that's why anytime Mr. Rossman plugs in something and it works and he's like, it's, it's work, it's fine. I cringe because I know that it's probably going to just come right on back the next day as a genuinely faulty. To be honest, I think he already knows that. He's just simply doing it for um, dramatic effect. So, he knows how to play the drama. He's an expert at it. That's why he's got 1.2 million viewers, and I've only got 22,900 and something. Oh, wow, yeah, there's, there's corrosion all over this thing. The fact that it even started is fairly impressive. Oh, look at that. So people go, MacBooks can't handle any corrosion and one resistor goes down and the whole thing's broken. I'm doing a bad job of imitating Lewis doing a bad job, or doing a good job of imitating a user. Anyway, it's all fun and games. We get along perfectly fine. The stream is dark. Uh, the overhead is dark, unfortunately. There's not a lot I can do about it at this point. That is some messed up stuff in there. Computers, like humans, are interesting creatures that have a bit of a duality with regards to life and death. There are plenty of times where a human has had one teeny tiny little thing hit them and they die. And then there are other times when they've been put through a meat mincer and everything, they still come out and they manage to survive. So the severity of the damage done, at least superficially, is no gauge to 
the outcome. So we're going to do some flux and boil and see what we got. That's okay. Mark's allowed to Mark's allowed to have um, dodgy suggestions. In fact, he's probably telling me that because he knows it's not going to be an SMC reset. And this is that is impressively bad. That's basically asking to be completely wiped and redone. Hey ZX. Oh, look at that, that's pure chaos in there. Yeah, let's just get rid of all of this and start again. Shoot. And Maven. Ah, <laughs> uh, Christian, you know, I really want to be more like 10,000 a month. That would be nice. I'm aiming to get to that mythical 100,000 subscriber mark. That would be really nice. And then I can have a useless silver plaque on my wall. And then after that, just let my channel go to hell. There's some really nasty corrosion here. Well, uh, hopefully no... Well, yeah, hopefully no really damaged pads, but there's certainly going to be a lot of rework going on around here. And look at this. That's just, that's just gnarly. I'm going to have to earn my keep on this one. Uh, we've got a Veer chaser there. This is one here, that's straight to a Veer. So we might have to chase that. That could be going straight under here. Hopefully, if we're lucky, it's actually one of the power rails. From a design perspective, I would expect it to be more likely to be a power rail than a SMC uh, data line. It just by the orientation of it, because you know you can see it's going into the SMC. Hopefully it's not a CPU line. I'll find out in a little bit when I check the board view and the schematic. All of these have got to come off. Mark, I did not take you to be a noob of Apple. I thought you at least did a fair bit. Well, you're certainly helping me out, that's for sure. Can't wait for that package to arrive for both the boards and the Marmite. Oh, I meant the decks, not the boards. Nothing surviving this. Mm. 
looks like that one with the veer is going up to here so yeah it's more likely than not it's going to be a power rail hey Sam Davies let's have a look and see what it is bring up the flex board view if you are doing MacBook repairs then certainly if you do it on a professional basis get yourself a copy of Flexboard View it will make your job easier okay, schematic let's see this is a cluster of three okay up here yeah that's 342 so that's what we were looking at so if you go to the microscope this one here that's 3v42 which is fine because we can pick it up from a great number of other places TNT didn't pick up yesterday so I took it to them oh okay cool yeah Osis. Okay, I gotta get rid of all of those bits and pieces. They were being a bit reluctant to come off when I was trying before, so hopefully with the leaded solder now they'll come up a bit cleanly. And throughout all this, hopefully I don't have to redo the SMC. I mean I know you're all gunning for me to have to do the SMC, which is really cruel of you unjustly probably the sort of cruelty that would get you into a war crimes court uh, this is just a train wreck It'll look pretty soon. Whoops, that was a little, uh, a little careless. Yo, Seth, let's not SMC this. I don't want to SMC this. SMCs are great and all, but i got to admit, in my current state of mind, I probably would prefer not to. I want to conserve my energies to finishing up the fence tomorrow. There's some really ugly corrosion going on here. Yeah, that pad's a goner. There's no pad there. <laughs> that one's also gone. Well, rather, the pad's there, but the trace leading up to it is gone. You two are okay. You two are okay. I might actually remove the SMC edge bonding just on that corner. Is it okay to use WD-40? I've never tried it. I can't imagine it actually would be much good for them. I don't know. Maybe someone else has tried it. But... Um Actually, I might as well just take the lot off.
just in case it gets too hot and it decides to float. It shouldn't, but what it shouldn't and what it does do can often be very different things. Yeah, this is a fair bit of rework here. This one's going to take us a little bit of time. Uh, Mark, sweet of you to say... <laughs> I shouldn't say sweet. Nice of you to say that, but I am definitely not a tutor. At the best, I might lead by example, but that's about it. Definitely not a tutor. Hey, Travis. By the way, when I say lead by example, I don't mean that my examples are actually going to be correct, but rather I will just do what I'm going to do and uh, let the universe sort out whether I was right or wrong. Hey, Abdullah. Shoot, just knock that those two resistors off. Oh well, sayonara. Leading by example. I'm just trying to get a better exposure on that copper because it's covered in trash not corrosion trash okay this is better years of model aircraft shaving down fine balsa and things like that proved to be useful finally trying to get to the edge of this corrosion. Mark, Mark, Mark. You're trying to taunt the universe into biting me, aren't you? I'd be surprised if this SMC should be replaced because it did boot fine. Then again, it was running slow. Hmm. I think Mark's jinxed me. It's a fine job, Mark. Fine job. Yeah, there's a bit of a problem. This trace here, a bit of exposed. Any risky areas, we're going to cut back and then 
Yeah, check to make sure they're not broken through. It's looking pretty good. It's certainly better than it was before. <laughs> By the way, a leader, if you're watching, 10:30. Let's see if Tiger's out there. Time to check for the tiger. Hey, Michael Chan. Nihoma. Going to work later. Oh, right. Oh, well, I guess you get to watch me do work now. <laughs> In the meantime. Are you going to use Yes, I usually do. <laughs> Often what I do like to do is cover the copper with some... Um, uh, what do you call it? with some solder and then mask it scope came down yay Let's see if we can get it back There we go. It's not the camera at fault, it's the connector. I'm pretty sure that's just a freestanding via, so that's not going to, a test pad, so it's not going to be an issue. I'm not sure what this one is. We've got our via stalk there, but uh, I'm not sure. Okay, I think both of those we can ignore. <coughs> They're just test points. As long as they get you know, washed up and don't corrode too much through. like if they go all the way through to wherever they are on the other side that could be a problem but if they get cleaned up then it shouldn't be any issue
And then of course we have this here to fix up as well. Oh yeah, <coughs> yeah. <coughs> Stick, uh, <coughs> dip these things into liquid plastic. Yeah. I bought a few cans of that stuff. Never used it completely, but definitely bought a few cans of it. I won't do the, uh, maybe I will, I'm trying to decide when I'll do the UV mask. Normally I prefer to do it after the ultrasonic, because then it doesn't get all gnarly. If you do it before the ultrasonic, the ultrasonic usually beats it up a fair bit. It doesn't look very pretty at all when it comes out. Do you replace the edge bunny? No. I wouldn't exactly even be sure what to replace it with for that matter. Now, uh, Brian, it was just a lot of corrosion and it wicked its way underneath the coat and left us with um, a bit of an unpleasant scenario. I might try UV coat this just simply so that all these parts here when I put them down the solder doesn't just wick away from the pad. Message my wife. been sent. Oh, I left my UV cure out in the blooming daylight. That was stupid. Stupid thing to do. Alright. Hey, Mr. Dinaktakan. Okay, we've got a big stick covered in UV cure. Let's go at it. Loctite 3621. Oh, never even seen the stuff, so... Uh, That's plenty.
There's no point in making this any thicker than it needs to be. We'll cover that up because we're not going to go use that beer. See how that goes. I may even, uh, it's not really steady hands, it's more just the microscope make me seem like I'm better than I really am. Hey Master BD, welcome. Quite the artiste. <laughs> we'll see how it goes when it uh, comes back. Uh, another 30 seconds or so, I'll be ready to go. I had to do a lot of this the other day when I ruined a, well I didn't ruin, I did fix it, um, an iPhone 7 and I had a TriStar fault and normally iPhone 7's TriStar is funnily enough I find easier to do than an iPhone 6S but this one was underfilled and that completely changed the game in a very bad way and I've still just got to upload the video, I need to find some backing audio for it. I certainly can't use the audio that was really there partially because it's not really recorded well and partially because there was a little bit too much um, uh, expressiveness in some of the things I said Martin Elf, Argentina, welcome. Alright, let's clear out some of these pads. Actually, this whole area is okay because it's. That was more of an overflow than actually us trying to cover anything here. So yeah, it's already trying to lift up from there. That's why I really don't like doing this before the ultrasonic. Because it never really bonds that strongly. So more than likely what's going to happen is we'll use it here to stop the solder from running off onto the floodplain and then it'll probably just come off in the ultrasonic because it's so thin and then I don't know maybe I'll just flood it again afterwards this time will tell okay looks good enough now we've got to go through the process of rebuilding everything Not sure if there's supposed to be a part there or not. Three, blah blah blah. Check the board view. 
Yes, there is. There is a part there. And that's another 342. Okay, so this pad and this pad probably both need a bit of assistance. So we'll need to link them together and then take them off somewhere else to the proper 342. Hey Jose Arasola. Arrow Dyke. Oh, that's never was a big fan of Arrow Dyke. Yeah, the only trouble with using green for this is that how do you tell the difference between this and corrosion? I mean, obviously you can, but it was one of those philosophical points. Um, James, I'm not sure if it was developed for that purpose, but it was, yeah, I think there's a little bit more to that story. It's a bit like the WD-40 is nothing but fish oil type thing, when in fact it's got no fish oil whatsoever in it. These are not going to be good soldered joins at this point, but that's okay because it's all just going to get hot aired. I've actually got blue um, UV, UV stuff coming in the mail. Blue would be more my sort of colour, not green. Uh, they're all looking a bit gnarly and ugly, but I think they'll do the deed for the day. Now we need to find a donor that actually has that sort of area intact, which doesn't seem like a big ask, but honestly, these days, finding a 34, 37 or a 165 that hasn't been brutally d beaten in that area is actually getting pretty hard. Uh, Ah, oh, right, a link's been posted. Well, look at that. Someone's nicked all those parts already. Fancy that. Mind you, there are a couple here we can use, so I guess we will. Surprise, surprise. Someone else has been here. Probably me.
Uh, it's taking a while to come off. Good old lead free solder just making life that quite a bit harder. Yeah, we don't need it down fully at this point, we just need the parts to tack on and that's all we care about. I'm amazed this, uh, this board actually booted when we tested it. If I'd looked at that corrosion and someone asked me would that boot, I'd say probably not. Mark Yanko, thank you very much. Quiche Lorraine and a brunch. Woo. Excellent. Quiche Lorraine's always nice. Okay, this six pin pad six pin part has not properly reflowed. I may I think I will just sort of make sure it's down properly. Because I may forget about it later. Okay, that's good. Hey, Technici. Okay, let's see what else I can drag off this board before I go get another one. Let's see, I think these two resistors up here next to the Yep, they have to be transferred across. They were the two that I unintentionally knocked off the board when I was doing the hot air wicking. I swear I need to invent something that lets me switch between boards really quickly. like a rotating table or something, switchback table. It's going to be fun. Okay, we need another board now, one that's got more of those parts. Hell, I didn't check to see if that was a 3437 or not, and crap, it was a 165. Well, it's not the end of the world, usually they're much the same. Oh, look at that, looks like someone had to do the same over here, and yeah, that wasn't a good day for that board. You've got an SMC on you. Why are you in that tray? Another 165. Another 165. Come on, give me a 3437. 165. 165, 165. Oh, 34.37 finally.
<laughs> oh, that's funny. That is so funny. The fact that there is no resistor on that one there. There is, however, this one. We do know about that one. Hmm. My wife still hasn't replied to me. She's either just forgotten me or I don't know what she's doing. I suppose I am a bit forgettable after a while. As long as she's not doing anything horrible like singing along to Justin Bieber or something. Uh, most things I can handle, but I'd probably cry if that was the case. Ah, oh, come on. Phone beeped ages ago. That was someone else. I oh know, you're right. Okay, yeah. Didn't hear the phone. That's sad. I've got the phone on full volume and I still didn't hear it. Very sad. <sighs> yeah, Rodrigo, it's a real luck of the draw when it comes to corrosion on these things. Okay, so we've got a whole bunch of caps and stuff to transfer over here. I actually might change the board orientation around. Sorry, just yabbling to myself, getting a professional opinion. Thanks, Teresa, by the way. Let's focus on this. good enough. Um, I'd say I couldn't hear it because I can't hear very well.
I'm not sure what caused this particular corrosion, but it, there's all manner of things possibly could do it. Hey, a tombstone, that other one. What are you doing getting tombstone for? You don't get to tombstone. Alright, now that all looks very ugly indeed. Not the sort of thing I would bring home to a family dinner. So now we have to do the hard work of trying to make it look at least a little more respectable. Oh, that's right, whoops. I forgot that naturally, of course, that's going to flip out and go the wrong directions. This arrangement up here confuses me. It's just like a just a, a loop there of trace. So, but if they're both capacitors, what the heck's going on there? Hey, Bob McCabe. Three forty-two, three forty-two, three forty-two. So. Ah. That's just whacked that they're all the same. Continuity beeper on. Let's see if it's telling the truth. I gotta say, uh, this multimeter is actually slower on the continuity than the Vicky. The Vicky is pretty much instant. This one is surprisingly slow. Which kind of upsets me a bit. I might try a higher threshold. So like... Mm, 250 ohm maybe. Try that. See if it's faster. Still a bit sluggish. Anyway. So these should be 342, and you should be 342, yep. It's just kind of strange how they've done the trace like this. It's just, it's, it's weird, alright? Why didn't they just make it a single bar? Hey Nuno, in Portugal. Yeah, it's like, why didn't they just make this one single bar kind of like they have here. It's it's doing my head in, man. It's like I just want to blob solder the whole lot. Because we go back to the schematic, so this is them here. All three of them, 342. So it's like, why did they have this fancy little loop here and then out to here? Oh, what's the dealio? What am I missing? Playground for electrons. Yeah, possibly. That's, uh, uh, yeah, that's probably more realistic than you expect. <coughs> now, if that was a high frequency signal line, I'd totally believe that. But since it's not, I don't know what to think. Well, I'm going to crossbar them all. I'm going to get a piece of my wire. Put them across the terminals like a good spanner across a car battery. And let the sparks fly. Check the schematic. Well, that could actually be why in the sense of, from a schematic perspective, they could be distinct. 
Uh, let's see, C5008. Okay. 5007, no, that's the same. 5002. Alright, so they are all part of the same group. That's that, that and that. It may have just gotten designed that way because they subgrouped these ones. But electrically, in this instance, I don't think it's going to make any difference at all. Yeah, electrically, it's a no reason over. Beautifully connected. And I'm not going to dig the donor board. Just had to scratch back that little bit of copper that was there because we don't want to go near this line here, which of course is ground. Conspiracy by the Illuminati. Fair enough. I'll buy that. That's good enough. Now we've got to get our 342 over to here and over to here. Hey, Kratos. Design by a committee. Hmm. So we've got a couple of options. Let me see if this is still intact. And if it, to these, and if it is, then we'll just jump across. Okay, so we do have continuity between here and here. So what we're going to do is just run this over to there. I'm trying to wonder whether I can get away with using a uh, uh, weekend. Where's my little pa there it is. Uh, Yosef, it's 342. PP bus 342. Uh, not PP bus. PP 3V 42 G3 hot. I'm kind of doing this backwards to what my hands want to do. Get off the cable. You become quite sensitive to weight being on the soldering line. That trace that you can see there underneath the green is not 342. Oop, that one I heard. Ooh, damn, yes. Yeah, there's a lot of work. It's not too bad once you sort of just, you know, get into the flow of it. 
at least with this work the traces are pretty much intact and you know structurally the board's okay there's just a few little bits and pieces you've got to fix up some boards you get it's just too much of a train wreck and you have to just walk away from it but this one's not too bad alright so that's pretty good yeah, might be, try and clean up some of the puffy pads on the ends like this you kind of have to be a little bit careful because you can easily displace the parts like almost then and sometimes you wonder whether it's worth it because you're like well what's the point you know electrically it's all the same I guess it matters to me that at least I tried to clean it up best I could Okay, now move down the line. Those ones are okay. We can ignore them. This here we need to pull up and replace. There's corrosion under there. We don't know whether the pads are corroded underneath. Because even though there's any that, maybe we, maybe all we need to do is just a flux and boil, but we can't be sure so we're just taking it off and looks like there was corrosion under there so probably a good thing we did take that off Uh, Bob, it's actually, a, it's a bit of a, um, an illusion, perhaps. I suspect that, well certainly under the microscope, once you can see your hands under the microscope, it doesn't seem as bad, or you don't wobble as much. The other thing is that you do learn to rest your hand against things in certain ways, so the only thing that can actually move is just your fingertips. And when you do that, it gives the illusion that you're quite steady when really you're not. Have you ever seen the movie Toy Story? When that old guy comes in to fix up Woody and you see him thread the needle and you see his hand shaking, shaking, shaking as he's preparing to get that needle started. Well, that's pretty much how it is with a lot of this. You sit there and you're like, and you just wait for the right second, the right second, and then you stick the soldering iron down and hopefully you get it in the right spot. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm curious to see how the SpaceX goes on the landing. I've been watching all their other stuff, so... Okay, so we've got a possible problem here. We can see that this goes straight to a veer. And we're going to make sure that that isn't corroded through. Because if that's corroded through, we're going to have to run a trace. So we're just going to keep sort of slowly, softly grinding our tip into that little hole there clear out the corrosion all the gnarly stuff and hopefully we can get oh look at that we don't even have a pad so we really are desperately going to be hoping on the upside looks like the veer is good well find out where that goes and hey Warren Weird, it's a ground one? That doesn't make sense. Well, according to the schematic, that pin that we just ground out is ground. So that's not a problem at all. It's just kind of strange that they would 
use a vehicle. I guess that makes sense. It makes sense because it's more important perhaps to get all these other lines routed first and then ground can just be picked up from anywhere else. It's a sort of like a secondary type thing. So we could probably, that's probably not ground. I'm sure there's a ground nearby. Oh, you can't see. Anyway, we can steal a ground from here. That's another ground, so we'll just run a trace over to there. Mad Mac Tech. Thank you. That was appreciated. And I think we will just use another piece of that wire. Did I break that too close? It's a little thick for this job, but we'll see how we go. I think I'll start by... Okay. Wait, what am I doing? I should just check to see if that's ground. I'm being an idiot. Why didn't you stop me? Yeah, that's no trouble at all. It's been a complete idiot there. I didn't have to run anything. Can you build up bad trace using solder only? Only if you've got something to stick it to. That's the trouble. Solder doesn't want to form wires or pads on its own. You need to have something for it to bond to. Oh wow, I didn't want to... Is it late? Yes, it's uh, 11.30 here in the east coast. No daylight savings up here, thankfully. Okay, I'm just thinning out this a little. Okay, it should be good. I might leave that there for the moment and hopefully it doesn't move when I drop the um, part onto it. Okay, let's have a look at our donor. Oh, this one's had a fair bit of work done to it too. Uh, see now when you start getting into this sort of stuff where you've got a lot of missing pads I think I must have got halfway through this one and decided stuff it, I'm done. You can often get a corrosion that eats out a lot of these under the CPU. Uh, no, that's not the CPU, that's the uh, Thunderbolt area. Yeah, this here, when you start getting under the CPU and you get all the missing parts and corrosion, it's usually a bad sign. Even if you get it all fixed up, it's not unusual for you to have temperature sensitivity areas and things like that. You give it a go, but the chances are low. Lots of energy. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's a complete contrast to how I felt the last couple of days doing the fencing enclosure. After the first day, I was wrecked for two days. I r really could barely get out of bed. I haven't felt like that before, and it was quite a concern to me. Do you really want to do that 
that, Paul. I don't think you want to do that. Don't do that, Paul. Don't do that. Okay, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to drop some lead solder paste onto that exposed copper wire. And that is then going to form kind of like a bit of a pad, a bonding point. Okay, that's a lot of paste. Yep, that'll do. Not too worried about the excess paste. It will just tend to either ball out elsewhere. It won't have a tendency to create a short under the legs. Fingers crossed. We'll test it before we power up. So we might get rid of at least half of that though. Yep, yeah, that'll do. Even though that looks very, like, s scattered, which it is, it's not a problem. Bob, how old are you? If that's not too personal a question. But hey, you brought it up. supposed to go that way. Crud. None of my solder balls stayed there. Instead they just can, came together as that ball there. Okay, we can still stick that there and see if that gets drawn in under the pad. I don't know. 67. Oh, crikey. Okay. Uh, you got 20 on me there. Fair point. I'm not going to argue with you on that one. Interesting that I actually have a fairly sizable number of uh, experienced people here. Lewis seems to get a lot more of the younger group. Funnily enough though, I do get a fairly high female percentage. Which I consider to be a good thing. Let's try to reheat that again, see if we can get a slightly better wicking under that pad. I don't want to touch that because that's just begging to get disrupted if I do. Uh, I guess we're going to have to have a little bit of faith that it did make contact. There's no real way of me proving that. It's a John Wick look. Huh. I don't look very John Wickish right now. At least I don't think I do. Okay. So we've got that fixed. We don't really need to worry about those. Cleaned up all the SMC fun and games. Uh, at this point, I guess we want to see whether we can get a blinky. And if we get a blinky, that would be nice. Experienced and not old. Well, you know, there's there are people who can be old and have no experience. So maybe I'll just making the assumption that the people here have the experience to know that they're being entertained by what they're watching. Okay, right. 
Aha. Let's see if we max safe. Let's see if we can get a green blinky and not a great kablammy. Kablammy is not desirable. Instant green powers up. I really should put the fan in. Okay, that's normal because remember this is thirty four, thirty seven. So we'll go up, down, up, down, up, down. <laughs> Just gonna find my fan while I wait for that. Oh, there it is. I should have put the fan. Okay, we got green blinky. Green blinky, good. Green blink, good. I believe. No, wait, that's wrong. No. Us of belief is please. Danke. Thank you. Yeah, uh, that's pretty convincing to me. I'm pretty happy with that. Let me just check what's going on here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll just don't mind me a moment here. Is the screen broken or is there some other fault? Question mark. Late night, uh, late night sales pitching. Try to get people to buy into my services, my slightly elevated price services compared to what most people are used to out there. Particularly when it comes to iPhone repairs, screen repairs. I have the upside of having a fairly captive market here with the nearest competitor being 140 kilometers away. But that said, um, I do provide good warranty on the work I do and all that sort of thing, which is a lot more than what can be said for some of the jobs I've seen come back in here from other places where they're cheaper. You do very literally get what you pay for. Okay, I don't want to put this into the customer's chassis because this has got flux all underneath it, and subsequently it will, you know, probably sh it's that bad that I shouldn't even do it to my own deck. Um, I'll just heat it up, get that, absorb a bit more of it. I don't want to sully up people's chassis with the junk that I've put on it. It's okay if I make a mess of my own, but theirs I would prefer to leave as pristine as I possibly can. Oh, you're welcome, Barry. What was I enlightening you with? I can't remember. Was there something? Ooh, food. Okay, gloves are gonna come off. Ha <laughs> oh, ha! Thank you. Mmm, <laughs> delicious donuts. Okay, not donuts, but uh, certainly delicious, toasty, cheesy, tomatoey goodness. Is that pepper in there? I hope so. Mmm, mmm. Oh yeah, it's good pepper. Mm. Mm. Oh, you're welcome, Barry. Now you have to watch me eat. Yeah, Bobo should put stickers on. I do actually most of the time. This is a meal even Lewis could eat. It's entirely vegetarian, 
It's not vegan, but it is vegetarian. And it's hot. <laughs> Um, thank you, Victor. That's oh, such a shishi. Alright, Joseph, take care. Cup of tea. Now, I'd probably be having a coffee, but maybe not this late at night. Yeah, 20 to midnight, no coffee. Uh, Christian, the problem is that we've got this backlight um, layer, this plastic backlight layer, and once Flux gets onto that, it's very hard to get it off. Yeah, Pedro, uh, having coffee, 10 o'clock's about my limit. Sometimes I do have it at midnight when I'm feeling crazy, but... Actually, even nine o'clock's my limit. I might have a decaf. Hello, Masati. Mm. It's like a paper plate. I can throw it down. Nothing's coming through on the other side. It's my chassis. Uh, classic um, Kenny Rogers. Gotta love how he gets his voice down there. You gotta know and to hold them. Know and to fold them. Yeah, I'm gonna stop right there. But anyway, yeah, he does a good job of that. Ah, <coughs> yeah. Are you in um, Northeast Australia? Yes. Oh, dark and air you get from stickers on machines made from plastic, right? I see what you mean. Yeah, so they're, they're not actually darkened areas. It's more a case of the rest of the plastic is light and due to UV exposure. Yeah, shush, Teresa. You can just go into the corner. Thank you very much. I know I can't sing, but it doesn't mean I won't try and make a mockery of everyone else. Hey, load them. Never count your money at the table. Yeah. Plenty of time for counting when the gambling's done. Dealing's done? Gambling. What? Why don't you like the song? Toasted sandwiches are fantastic things to have after like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night. There's just something deliciously comforting about a toasty being handed to you at the late hours of night. I don't know what it is. For me it was always because when I was out doing IT work in the remote uh, game parks and hotels, it was the only thing we could really get from the kitchen at the time. And you know, it would often be quite cold out there. There's a place I used to do work, uh, Castleburn, which was a timeshare place in the Drakensberg in um, the eastern eastern South Africa, sort of Durban area, Eastern Cape. Not Eastern Cape, sorry, no. Anyway, but it, it was very cold at that point, and so getting toasties handed to you while you're in the server room trying to get some cables set up when it's quiet at night because the fact that you don't want to have to be interfering with the daily you know, uh, hotel jobs that have to be done. Pardon me. So, yeah, definitely very nice to have. A childhood trauma attached to country music. 
Uh, that's, um, I don't mean to laugh as in laugh at your trauma, but more a case of, you know, I'm living here in Charter's Towers and country music is about the only thing that most of the people love around here. So yeah, I can appreci appreciate the trauma. Do I get any boards for e-waste being in Melbourne? They send me machines occasionally to fix, but I've never bought anything from them. Is Keith Urban popular in Australia? Not that I think of. To a lot of Australians, Keith Urban is just a tag along to Nicole Kidman. Alright, that was a delicious toasty. So much so, I kind of think I'll go off and make another one when I'm done here. So after that uh, half time, which is actually three quarter time, actually we're more like overtime. We've got the clock on hold. <sighs> three down, seven to go. See if we can make the touchdown line there. Eh? Okay. Uh, agreed, Ben Wilson. Yes. All right. Whoop, what have we got here? A message came through. You want to know now the stuff is yes, yes, please, us a belief. Uh, yes, please. Uh, oh, yes. But I... I might... Be, ugh. For the people who create the keyboard swiping system on the iPhones and everything else, please can you add a left and right hand offset option because left-handed people do not put their fingers down the same way that right-handed people do and it creates all sorts of crazy words. Um, yes, please to both, but I'll be finished with the repair fairly shortly in less than five minutes, so I'll be up there to eat it. Thank you. I love you. Right. Yeah, you heard it, folks. We're on the last second of the clock. We just got to make sure that we can get over the uh, try line. It's not the try line. Touchdown line. Yeah, that's it. Now, please be aware, Australians don't actually really do play gridiron or NFL or whatever the heck it is. But we do know about it, okay? So I'm going to use terminology that's familiar to those who are scared of many things on this world, okay? Whereas with the rest of us, we'd probably prefer to talk about cricket instead. So we're going to get our MRI. Plug that in. Since it's 34.37, the MRI is actually going to work. Although we'll probably be a little bit upset. We might put the battery in. Give that a test while we're at it. Actually, probably couldn't hurt to put a screw in there. Nothing quite so fun as testing these machines and the battery comes falling right out in your face. It's generally not a good idea. Okay, here we go. We've got a fan spin, but we don't have a SMC. Oh, there we go. Okay, it's just. Ah, oh, Mark, that's not good. Sad that you're having to 
You know, living life alone if you don't want to be alone is not a nice life at all. On the other hand, you could be like uh, Mr. Nikola Tesla and live a solitary life. Well, sort of solitary. And channel that frustration and energy into solving the next problem with the world. Okay. It is normal for the MRI to take a while. It will flash up good in a moment. There we go, see? What was that noise I just heard? It was, it was weird. Oh, it was my wife. Yep. I love you too, bank account. Thank you for letting me know that the bank took another $90 out of my account because of the fact that they want it for my bank transfer processing. Bastards. Why, bank? Why do you have to keep taking my money just because I'm using your services? How rude. Have you ever pulled it all night? Oh, plenty of times. Not lately, though. I deliberately avoid doing all-nighters anymore. I mean, sure, when you're in your 20s, fine. Maybe halfway into your 30s you can do it. But I think it's probably universally agreed that by the time you get into your mid to late 40s, it's a bad idea. So you might have a great, great night all nighting, see the sunrise and things like that, but then you'll probably suffer for the next three to four days. Can you say hello to my grandson, Aiden? Is that Aiden? Aiden, hello. F apologies if I am not pronouncing that correctly. Hope you're enjoying the stream. Steve K. I would like to know why you put yourself in a position where the battery could hit you in the face. It's called, um, I don't know, I'll think of something. Give me a week for either of us to forget that you even asked that. Close inspection, how about that? Okay, memory test. Come on, you're almost there. You're almost there, and then I can go get my toasty. Contor contortionism? I've got an award for masochism, but I don't think that... Well, I guess that could actually apply. Hey, that just glitched. I think it was me, though. Okay, we're good. Understandably, the hard drive is no good. The sensors are complaining because the, uh, the camera is not plugged in. The battery is a little low, but it is charging. Hmm, good question. Are you charging? Currently sitting at 800 and... Yeah, that's a... Is that a glitchy screen? Fortunately, this is my test chassis, so... It's okay. It's 70... I am a little concerned about the lack of charge going on here at the moment. Battery, the solder bridge. <laughs> it just jumped up to 900. It could be that the battery was extremely low. I'm going to give it two minutes or so, or two hours, and see if it picks up. Uh, Zane Smith, it's called MRI, Mac Resource Inspector, but it's only applicable to older machines now. Hey, Jessica. Uh, please don't be something I've got to fix. K 
killing me, computer. Let's see if we get voltage. Let's see, G3 hot. What are you complaining about overload for? Come on, do your job. Why are you manual range? Range auto. Do your job. Wow, 6.4. That's really bad. That's really low. Um, one way we can test this is to actually take this battery out and put a known working one in. Or at least something vaguely working. Yeah, this will do, I think. Do I play Grand Theft Auto? No. I, unfortunately, I only really play Diablo. And I don't even play that well. Yeah, that battery is Cactus. Take that out. Let's see if we get a better rate here. Kind of looks like it's already getting a slightly better rate. We'll see. Mind you, it is suspiciously close to still being. Oh, come on, man, you can do better than this. Just let it go for a bit. <sighs> Having a high, you know, two, three hundred million of high current rate doesn't mean a lot at this point. Uh, on my side here, I don't actually provide assistance in that way. Basically, you can send machines to me if you are in Australia, and I can repair them. But I don't do, I don't do tutoring. I don't do teaching. I don't do anything like that. Basically, this is the limit of the kind of help I'm providing. I just simply just do live streams for people to be entertained by, if that, and I produce software. But that's about it. Um, Beyond that, there are better people than me that can do actual human human training. That's definitely not what I do. It's not even close. Okay. Let's pull this battery. Okay, so that it, we just got a bad battery. Bad battery. So we'll have to add that to their cost. I think I will leave it at that. 
Christian, let's see. There, because this is just fine. Plug it back in. Yeah, let me do. Uh, oh, just finishing up. Oh, I'm not chasing you away per se. Just hold there for two a minute if you want. Or actually, just stick it on the top of the computer there. It'll keep it warm. Okay, love you. Yeah, we'll put it. That's fine. It's just a bad battery that's causing the problem. All right, I am out of here. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. I appreciate it. Um, Amasati, uh, sorry I can't help you, but um, like I said, if you're after board view software, the book flex board view, that I can um, help with, but um, not the other style of things, so I'm afraid not. And with that, I am out of here. To My toasty has arrived, obviously. The ham, cheese, and tomato this time. So, mm, going to enjoy that. And I might go and play a little bit of Diablo, but I don't think I'll be streaming that. So, you all take care, and I may see you tomorrow. We'll see how it goes. I'm, I've got to put those boards through the ultrasonic cleaner, too. In the meantime, take care. I'll catch you later. I'll see you later.